Hello, I'm Paul with XBlue Networks. This video covers securing your XBlue X25 or X50 communication server. If your X25 or X50 system is installed directly to the internet, it is very important to secure the system from would-be intruders. I'm going to use our added security checklist as a guide. It's available on our website under the X25 page. I'm going to go there and get that for our reference. When you're ready with the checklist, enter the server programming interface using a web browser. I like Chrome, Mozilla, uh, Firefox, or Opera. The first thing to do is to change the passwords. I like to use a website, strongpasswordgenerator.com, to generate random passwords. If you use this site, uncheck the box to use punctuation as the X25 and X50 don't like all of the punctuation that this site generates. Once I have my new passwords, I'm going to save them in a file on my PC so that I can get them later if I need to retrieve them. I'm going to use Microsoft Notepad to save my new passwords. First, change the system passwords. There are three. In the X50, the default passwords are user, support, and 000000. In the X25, the default passwords include the last six digits of the server MAC address. To find your X25 server MAC address, look at the back side of the server on the label. It's listed there. Remember that it's the last six characters that are used as part of the default password. Now I'll navigate to Management Access Control Passwords. Since I've logged in as the administrator, I'll change the other passwords first, and then I'll change the administrator password. The default user password is user DAB 048. I'll change it to something new and save it. I can then change the support password. The default is support DAB 048. And I'll change that to something new and then save that. When I'm ready to do the admin password, it is also admin DAB 048. When I change that, though, I'm going to have to log in again since my password that I was logged into previously is no longer valid. When you're done with changing the system passwords for access, go to the telephone passwords and change those next. Input the new password into each extension's password data field. Telephones that are connected to the X25 and functional will be updated within the server information when that page is saved. For telephones that are installed at remote locations or if your telephones don't restore registration after the password has been changed, you must enter into the phone's web interface and set the password there. Do this at a PC that is connected to the same network as the telephone being programmed. To log into the telephone, you must know its IP address. To find it, press the Menu button, scroll to Info, press the Check button in the center of the navigation buttons, then scroll down to see the IP address. The IP address is entered into the web browser address bar to open the IP phone programming pages. You'll need to input the web page username and password. The username is admin, A-D-M-I-N, all lowercase, and the password is 1234. Navigate to the SIP page, that's S-I-P, and find Authorized Password, input the strong password there, and then save the page. It is important, too, to note that all extensions in the server should be programmed with a difficult password, even if those extensions are not installed. Assign the extensions and input the password for each, and then save the page. Hiding refers to the response of the X25 or X50 to queries from the internet and local area network. The premise is simple. Instead of using the default web page response port of 80, change it to something someone would have to know in order to log into your system. Notice in the address bar of the web browser there is no port number. This is due to the default port 80 being assigned. By changing the port, the person browsing must use the port number in the address bar or else the X50 or X25 will not respond. Notice that after changing the port number, I must now append the IP address to include the port number I selected. 
Under advanced settings now, we're going to enable the firewall. It's a very simple thing to do. Uh, turning on the firewall is an effective way to thwart uh, would-be intruders. Uh, the X50 and the X25 um, firewall limits access to only those services enabled. So go to advanced settings, WAN, and check the enable firewall checkbox. The next thing to do is to secure the wireless access to your system. Since the X25 and X50 are both a, a communication server and a wireless access point, as well as a router and gateway, uh, it's important to make sure that access to this local area network portion of your um, system is only by those people that you want to have access to it. By default, the basic wireless segment is not protected, and anyone can log on to the Wi-Fi access point and navigate the Internet and potentially your network. The open access makes network setup easy, but it is not a recommended mode of operation. When I look at the wireless networks that are available to my PC, I can easily find the X25 and X50 systems within the proximity of my PC. There is no default password, so I can connect to that network and begin using the Internet connection. If I'm a hacker sitting in the parking lot in front of your office, this open connection could be trouble. There are a few things that you should do. First, disable the SSID. This is a very simple practice, and this will hide your network segment and make it much harder for an intruder to connect to your access point. Notice on my list of available networks that there is a hidden network. This means that the network administrator for the access point that I'm looking at has disabled SSID broadcast. When someone attempts to link onto a hidden Wi-Fi segment, they'll need to know the SSID or the segment will not allow them to join. The next thing you can do is enable security on the Wi-Fi basic segment. Doing so means that you'll have to use that password at every device you wish to have connected wirelessly. You can do this easily using the WPS, Wi-Fi Protected Setup. Enabling this means you can use the button on the top of the server, which is labeled with a key, to automatically register devices to the X25 or X50 server. When a device has a WPS mode, just press the button on the server and for the next five minutes, devices with this protocol will be able to connect and write the security code to their profile and you'll not have to repeat the operation again. If there are devices that will connect to the X25 or X50 server that do not have a WPS option, you must select a security encryption from those available and set up a password which must be then input at any device attempting to connect to the Wi-Fi access point. Another great step that you can take in order to eliminate unwanted use of your Wi-Fi network is to enable MAC filtering. The MAC address filtering is a great way to restrict access to your Wi-Fi access point to only those devices that you authorize to connect. A MAC address is unique to every network device, therefore you can list those devices allowed to connect. In my example, I have an iPhone that is connected to my X25 Wi-Fi access point. I'll use the X25 wireless station info to discover the MAC address of this device. I could also look into the iPhone settings, general, about, and look down to the Wi-Fi address. And this is my iPhone's Wi-Fi MAC address. When I have the MAC address, I'll open the wireless MAC filter, enable and allow it, then add the MAC address that I wish to allow to that list. Now this device will be allowed to use the wireless access point. Devices that are not on this list will not be able to access your Wi-Fi access point. It's also necessary to secure your system from intrusion from the telephone network. Dial pad coding was introduced many years ago and is also a potentially open door to intrusion. As usual, the best technique is to change the default passwords. In the X50 or X25, web interface navigate to voice, voicemail general and change the existing administrator password, which is default of six zeros, to any new six digit number. Do the same thing for each voicemail box for every extension, even those that are not connected. Also make sure that DISA is disabled. DISA allows direct inward system access. This feature can be used by would-be intruders to access your telephone lines. Changing the voicemail passwords for each extension is done on Voice Voicemail Phone Extension under the Configure button for each extension. Make sure just to change the four-digit extension password for voicemail access to something other than the default. In the off chance that someone were able to get past all that you've done so far, you should learn as much as you can about them. The simple way to discover calling activity is to activate the standard SMDR feature that comes with your X25 and X50. To turn on SMDR, navigate to Voice System SMDR and Configure SMDR. 
set it to local and both, and then click on Save. This will allow you to monitor telephone traffic. You can also set up a stopping mechanism. For those that might have gotten past all that you've done so far, you can redirect calling attempts that they might try to prohibit the illicit use of your telephone connections. To do this, navigate to Voice Trunk Call Routing. The default configuration is very simple and meant to enable the system to start working right out of the box. That's fine in most cases, but when you're connected directly to the Internet or concerned about telephone network intrusion, you can stop traffic outbound very easily. Notice the table under the editable fields on this page. This is the route rule that is set by default. Find the Edit button in this table for that rule. Click Edit and move the contents of this rule into the editable fields. Change the contents of the fields to allow calling 11-digit calling only. Change the from field to 1. Change the to field to pound. Leave the minimum length at 1 and change the maximum length to 11. Then click Save Number 1. Note that this saves the contents of the first table entry. You can utilize this table to invoke very specific dialing patterns. 100 table entries are possible. A lot of discussion could be centered on the variations possible in this table, but to move this video along, I'll just say that the following table diverts calls that are outside of the normal, non-international dialing pattern to a non-working group, number four. The other entries allow seven-digit dialing in your own area if that's an option to you from your telephone line provider, and it allows ten-digit dialing even if your provider requires a one to be dialed first. Pause the video if you'd like to study this table. Moving on from there, the voice trunk call restriction is another good technique to thwart uh, would-be illicit use of your telephone network. Go to voice trunk call restriction and make sure if it's not existing already, add to the deny table the following rule. Another step that you can take to stop illicit use of the system is to disable UPnP. This is universal plug and play and is utilized to automatically register telephones to your server. Now that you've made all, we, all of these changes, and since you've configured many settings here in addition to the communications application programming that you've already done, it's a good idea to make a backup. You should also know that we cannot help you recover your password without a backup that was made following the password change. To make a backup, navigate to Management, Settings, Backup, and click the Backup button. This will cause the backup file to download to your PC. Be sure to save the backup file in a place on your PC where you will be able to find it and use it if necessary. That's it for this video. Thank you for securing your system. If you do need more information or help, please contact us at our website.